Welcome to How to Yu-Gi-Oh! Razzie Awards Ceremony 2023 Worst Archetype 2023 Testina Why is it the worst archetype? Well, it's a TCG exclusive archetype, so it's only available on the TCG side of things. But since its premiere, it's just done absolutely nothing. It has not entered the competitive scene. Um, even on the casual scene, this is an archetype that no one likes at all. Maybe some people like it, I don't know. It might have some interest. But overall, it's just been completely lackluster. It's lacking a lot of vision. And yeah. That's all I've got to say, really. Worst Wild Card 2023 XYZ Tribal Rivals. XYZ Tribal Rivals coming out in 2014. And at that time that it came out, it was extremely bad card. No, it wasn't played in the meta scene. I don't think this is even played in casual play for its time it's just not a good card i think it's meant to be a wild card given its effect as you can see in front of you but it's a reprint and a reprint that's really bad no one asked for this and definitely makes it the worst wild card of 2023 and i think that's all i've got to say about this let's move on okay and we have the worst side set 2023 valiant smashers Indeed, um, it's the worst side set. Um, why? Because it's the worst side set. Not because Centurion is a bad deck, but because of the results of the side sets we've had this year. Amazing Defenders, all of the archetypes in Amazing Defenders are currently meta at this point in time. Same thing with... Um, you know, Wild Survivors. It can be... It can be stressed out that most archetypes in Wild Survivors, again, have entered the meta scene. Um, you can use Hungry Burger, it is very possible, and it could be used and can enter Rogue, enter Rogue, Confederate Status, so it's two out of three. Now, when it comes to Valiant Smashers, it's only Centurion here that enters the competitive scene and any other archetypes there that are in Valiant Smashers don't get to enter the competitive scene. And this is what is, to me, is what heralds a really bad side set. It's got to have results on the competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! meta scene. It has to have at least, uh, the, all three archetypes in the side set have to at least have entered the competitive scene at some point in time, or at least can have a power level of rogue status. But in Valiant Smashers, we only have one archetype that can enter and no others can enter. And it's for that reason that I class the worst side set of 2023 being Valiant Smashers. The worst core set of 2023 is Duelist Nexus. Indeed, with the lowest grade out of all the core sets this year, I think we do have, on our average year, we have four core sets in a year. And so that is usually our average, and that is usually the average and usually what we have as core sets. It's always four, and any other sets that we have that aren't our core sets usually are Battles of Legends, Ghost, and Maze, the Maze sets, and other extra additional sets. But in a year, we always have four core sets. In the TCG anyway, and any other sets are extra except the side sets, which are which are classed as the deck build sets uh, in TCG anyway. So why is it, why do I consider this the worst core set? First of all, in terms of grading, it has the lowest grade. There's really nothing that Duelist Nexus has brought to the table, competitive wise, that's been really uh, strong. Uh, not a lot of cards here, Apart from, like, the zone, I believe, just one card, I think, um, Crimson Dragon, that is, ha has competitive re re relevance. But most other cards that have come out of this set have been absolutely abysmal. It's been a, it's been a set of a grade of average, and it hasn't really brought a lot of things to the table competitive-wise. This is for the reason that it is the worst core set of 2023. That's pretty much it. Let's move on. 
Okay, and we have the worst reprint of 2023, Overlay Regen. Indeed, Overlay Regen is a very bad reprint, as this card has been reprint, reprinted more than, I think, three times. This should be its fourth reprint. Again, this is a reprint which isn't needed. This is a card that no one is really looking out for in the TCG community. Who is looking out for this card? Who is excited for this card? Who wants this card? I think most of the community forgets that this card even exists um pretty much i don't think this was used in the xyz format when an xyz's were a thing i think it was used maybe casually but again i think overall it just got forgotten with other xyz support that we had over the years and it's just a forgotten xyz card at this point in time we have the dishonorable mentions include xyz reborn and hidden armory while xyz reborn has did have competitive revel, re relevance in the xyz format during the at that time hidden armory was one of these cards again that did have relevance at the time but then faded into obscurity and i think these are the cards that just i think is this their first reprint i believe this is xyz reborn's first reprint and i believe this is hidden armory's first reprint maybe they've had others but i believe like officially this should be their first reprint of these two cards but again even though these are the first reprints of these two cards and like overlay regen hasn't had so many reprints i still feel these are not reprints that the community at large was really looking out for and which is why we i would consider them the worst reprints of 2023 with overlay regen taking that first title spot as it's had the most reprints compared to the others in the dishonorable mentions let's move on Alrighty, and we have Missed Potential 2023, Waybridge, with dishonorable mentions 2023, including Fusion Duplication and Time Tearing Morganite. Now, why does um, the Missed Potential include Waybridge? So, first of all, what is Missed Potential? Missed Potential are essentially cards which have been released in the current core sets, and, we've, and we as a community have felt they have potential, and indeed, and the effects read, of a lot of potential yet they do not translate in reality to the meta scene and waybridge is one of these cards for example waybridge is a card heralded to have a lot of potential has having a similar effect to evenly matched yes it could not really banish cards but it had a similar effect for the fact that you could send cards from your opponent's field to the graveyard it is a normal trap and uh triple tactics thrust could add it to the hand set it um you know, it was a great removal. It was theorized at the time for Labyrinth, that Labyrinth could use it. But overall, this hasn't replaced or hasn't even come close to being a staple in removal for the game. And it is unfortunate that Waybridge, again, with so much potential, so much theorizing going over this card with the community, that it hasn't delivered. And it's a shame that it has missed its potential. And so that's why it takes first place in Miss Potential for 2023. We have dishonorable mentions including f uh, Fusion Duplication and Time Tearing Morganite. Now when it comes to Fusion Duplication, this is a card in theory sounds pretty powerful. Being able to copy any card that says Fusion or Polymerization in the name by banishing it in the copy means that you have an additional, uh, additional effect of let's say branded fusion or polymerization or greater polymerization or super polymerization the like etc etc now this is again as we know like copying effects in Yu-Gi-Oh are really really busted and extremely broken we've seen this time again any effects that copy other effects usually end up getting banned straight away so it is definitely to the knowledge of the community base that when we saw an effect like fusion duplication even though it was a trap there was just loads of potential for this card and we sort of sensed it but again it has not delivered and the the in theory uh crafting of this card has not delivered at all while we can say that branded has used this card again it has fallen out of favor for branded as branded has many other cards that are much prefer using rather than this card and you this is usually a card that branded drops or is not using straight away and we have time tearing morganite again time tearing morganite is is again one of these cards that 
is a card that in theory sounds all right. Being able to draw two cards instead of one during all of your draw phases and have a two normal summons instead of one, again, in theory, sounds very powerful. And indeed, if we use it for, and indeed, theorize that you can use this for uh, slow decks like Labyrinth or Anti-Meta decks, yes, it has the cost of you can't activate any hand traps, but in theory, it was theorized that this could be a really good card in slow Anti-Meta decks. Maybe Labyrinth could use it because, you know, our uh, trap tricks or other sort of decks but the issue comes twofold as Yu-Gi-Oh has evolved now and most decks or rather all decks really use hand traps or have arc in, in, in archetype ways that have hand trap kind of effects in archetype meaning that you cannot escape from hand trap effects and Time Tearing Morganite just does not deliver on all fronts. Theory doesn't mean it's good in practice. Worst set 2023 Legendary Collection 25th Anniversary Edition. Indeed, this is what I would consider the worst set of 2023. This Legendary Collection. Now, this is a set again. It's not a bad idea. Um, this is old. These are cards from when the game first started. Getting reprinted again, meaning that. They're much cheaper now and they're much easier to get. The problem with this set is that we don't have an official format in Yu-Gi-Oh! where you can play these cards. It is not officially sanctioned by Konami. While yes, there are there is a Time Wizard uh, tournament that you can go to official events, but again, there's no official format. So the only way of playing this format is basically non-existent and there's no official way to play it meaning that this is an absolutely dead set which is a bit of a shame really as this as if there was a format for this set if there was ways that you could play this set officially right in Yu-Gi-Oh then this would be a really good set and could get new players into this game but unfortunately this gives this deck this set the title of worst set of 2023 Okay, and so we have the worst support update 2023 going to Virtual World. Indeed, Virtual World getting support in Cyberstorm Access is the worst support update I've ever seen. This is support that doesn't help the archetype in any way at all. Out of all the supports we've uh, support we've had this year for archetypes, this support that just what does it do for Virtual World? absolutely nothing even the bare minimum of support which came from maze of memories for gate guardian changed the deck in some way did it make the deck uh competitive absolutely not but it made some big difference to gate guardian and the gate guardian support changed gate guardian as a whole to be a better more consistent deck now when we look at the first wave of support for the no, not first wave i believe Third wave support for Virtual World, we see absolutely no improvement to Virtual World as a whole. Nothing has been improved in Virtual World with this card. There is no improvement, absolutely nothing. This is why I would state it as the worst support update for Virtual World 2023. We have mixed expectations here with Gold Pride at 2023. So what is mixed expectations? Well, essentially, when Gold Pride premiered in uh, TCG this year, there was a lot of expectations for this car, for this archetype as a TCG exclusive. Um, there was a lot of things going for this archetype, and it was one of the first uh, TCG archetypes in a long time that actually, on on release, went and topped an event. So there was a lot of expectations going for. Um, Gold Pride. You had Gold Pride Punk, which was a very strong version of the deck at the time. So why did it fail to deliver and why were the expectations just dropped and why did it miss them? I think part of the reason why Gold Pride just could not deliver is the new time rule, is the time rules that we have in Yu-Gi-Oh! at this current point in time. We, you can definitely see it if you've seen the, uh, the latest tournament in Bologna 
for Centurion and why they've won with Lorenzo here winning the, uh, the first game with Centurion. Part of the reason why Lorenzo won that game in round one is simply because of the new time rules. We can see even though Infernoble is much better than um, Centurion, Centurion being able to play all these hand traps and it ends up being with time. I mean, we see in that game there that Lorenzo, uh, Lorenzo really only had to activate Ghost Mono Minter Chill, Burn um, negates Isolde there, and when Isolde was negated, Obviously, um, you have Curicolos having to make a second Isolde, and that was really it. He was burnt 1,600 points of attack damage. He then had to pay 1,000 life points to um, Cosmic Cyclone to negate the field spell for Centurion so that he could not Synchro Summon on the opponent's turn. And it was even though it was Curicolos' first turn with Infernoble, and even though his hand was very strong, because there was only five minutes on the clock and because the combo was really high, he scooped the game instantly and knew he wouldn't win, even though it was his first turn. Remember, there's only five minutes on the clock. Now, what, what does this elaborate example have to do with Gold Pride? Gold Pride, as an archetype, paid life points in order to activate their effects, right? It's a standard requirement for how the deck operates. You can already see the problem here. With the current time rules in TCG, this means that this game is always going to lose in games. You will lose just because you will always lose in time. This is part of the reason why Gold Pride just could not find success, especially Gold Pride Punk. Indeed, Gold Pride Punk could just not find success because you'd lose because of time, not because your deck was bad. In fact, Gold Pine Punk is a very skillful deck and you could do a lot of things with it. But just current time rules in Yu-Gi-Oh! just are heavily, are heavily against this deck and why it just cannot do anything in the higher tournaments. Okay, and so finally we have the worst hyped set 2023, Legendary Duelist Soling Burning Volcano. Indeed, we've had hyped sets in uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! As I've talked about this in the award ceremony, but in here in this Razzie ceremony, we talk about just the arc, just the things that just didn't get any hype at all. And I think the legendary Duelist Soul Burning Volcano is one of the sets that just didn't get a lot of hype compared to everything else. Even the Battling Legends set got hype, got quite a bit of hype because of Sky Striker support. Just, there was just not enough hype for this set. And I feel there have been hype for sets this year, but this is the set that just didn't get any sort of significant hype at all compared to other sets this year. Um, the hype for this set has been extremely low. Um, yeah, we just don't care about uh, fire, um, fire decks, funnily enough. Um, we have to take consideration that when this set came out, Age of Overlord wasn't out yet, and there was just nothing. Obviously, now we're, we're seeing a rise in popularity for this set, but the thing is, is that at the time of uh, release of this set, the hype for this set was very low. And it is for that reason why it is classed as the worst hyped set of 2023. We come to the end of this video. So... As I like to say, you are one step closer to becoming a Yu-Gi-Oh! Master. My fate, right, is in your hands.